<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and coming back with another PlayStation 4 jailbreak related video. Now, I've covered a few videos quite recently covering older consoles on the PS4. For example, you can build PS1 games for the PS4. You can also build PS2 games to work as packages and install and play on the PS4. But what about PSP? Well, you see, PSP is possible to an extent. There was actually a few PSP remastered games that were officially released for the PlayStation 4, meaning that there is a PSP emulator. However, just like the other two emulators, the compatibility is not the best on it, and I would actually say it's unfortunately the worst compared to the PlayStation 2 and especially the PlayStation 1. But right here is one of those official releases, which is Loco Roco. Now this is a PSP game, the game itself for PS4 actually contains the PSP ISO of this game, and it has HD textures and sounds and such to allow it to look nice and play nice on a PlayStation 4. But what we've been able to do is actually take the PSP emulator that was built for the PlayStation 4, and of course take it to utilize other PSP ISOs in it. Now, I do want to give this preface, although this is really cool, again, I am going to stress that unfortunately, the compatibility is just really not good for this emulator. So, this is going to be a video that will show you all how to accomplish this if you want to and how you can test it, but if you're expecting to play all your favorite PSP games on your PS4, you're probably going to be pretty disappointed. So either way, getting into this here, we are going to need a few things. Of course, we're going to need our jailbroken PS4, in which I have tutorials showing how to do that. We're also going to need a PC available in order to download and utilize an application, which will allow us to do this. We're going to need a USB drive to transfer the game over to our PS4. And of course, we're going to need your backed up PSP game or games of choice. So with all that, Let's move over to the PC. Now before we get started, as I have done on the PS1 and PS2 videos, I am going to direct you to the PSP emulator compatibility list for the PlayStation 4. Reason being is that this has several games on here with varying levels of success, and you can probably see right here that some games do work, like for example Age of Zombies, this has some minor issues and it is a PSP Mini, but a lot of games that have been tested are unplayable or have major issues. There's only a small amount of games that have been tested so far that are actually playable on this emulator, unfortunately. So, the other thing that you can do is if there are games that you're going to try out, and you try them and you have any variants of success or failures with them, you can actually contribute to this wiki and add your findings on here, which I would absolutely recommend doing. So either way, this is the compatibility list, so if you want to check and see if your game you want to try is on here, you're more than welcome to do so. And for the actual download, we're going to be using the Dark Programmers application right here, which is called PS4 PSP Classics GUI, just like his PS4 PS2 Classics GUI, which I had covered prior. The link for the download for his GitHub is going to be down below in the description, and if you come here, you can either go to the releases, and download the latest copy of PS4 PSP Classics GUI, which is in a zip file, or from the main page, you can just scroll down to the PS4 tools, find PS4 PSP Classics GUI, click on download, and save it somewhere you can easily find it. So right here, we have the zip file for PSP Classics GUI, and we have our game of choice. And as for the game, I'm not going to show how to back up your PSP games on this video, because it does require the games and a PSP console, and on top of that, I actually have a full video showing how to do that. So I will put the link to that down below in the description if you want to back up your own PSP games to utilize on this. So either way, once we get our zip file and our game, we're all ready to go. We can right click and extract the zip file anywhere here, and it should give us this debug folder or something similar. Inside the debug folder, you're going to want to scroll down and find the PS4 PSP Classics GUI.exe file. And in case you cannot see the file name extensions here, if you're on Windows, you can click on View and Enable File Name Extensions. But either way, once you find that, you'll just want to double click it, and you'll see this really awesome animation that was thrown in here, but just wait a few moments for this to launch. 
So here we go, the application has launched. And if you want to tweak any of the settings here, you can click on File, go to Settings, and right here, there's several different things that you can change. So if you want to change the temporary folder, place your NP title, if you want to enable or disable any of these, you're more than welcome to. But either way, it's pretty simple from this point. You just click on ISO and you find the PSP ISO that you want to load up. Mine is just sitting right here on the desktop, so double click that. Now the cool thing is it populates this with all the contents of the PSP game itself. So there's not too much we need to tweak here. It auto populates the title, the NP title. So at this point, we just click on Create PSP HD. From here, just pick somewhere you want to save this to. So I'm going to select this folder, press OK. And right here, we can give it a few moments and it's just going to create our package file. Now, the nice thing is once it's done, it opens up a folder containing both our package file and our GP4 file if needed. Again, if you can't see the file name extensions on Windows, you just need to enable them from your view but we need the package file itself. This is what we're going to copy to our USB drive. As for our USB drive, as per usual, you can check the properties. It needs to be either FAT32 or XFAT. I typically recommend XFAT, at least for PS4. If you need to format it, you can right click, format, and make sure you back up anything you care about off this drive, but we can do XFAT, default, quick is fine, okay and it's been formatted. Now that we're ready to copy over our package file, we can just grab this, right click, copy, go to the root of our USB drive, and paste it in right there. And just wait a few moments. And once this is all copied over here, check this out, we should have the files sitting there on our USB drive, so we can just come back here, right click, safely eject our USB drive, now let's remove it and take it over to the PS4. All right, over at the PS4, this is assuming you know how to navigate a jailbroken PS4 and you've already run the required jailbreak payload, but all we need to do is plug in our USB drive, go up to settings, all the way down to debug settings, game, installer, and install the package file. And just wait a few moments here. And now with all that done, it should say it's ready to use, and if we press the PlayStation button, check it out. It doesn't look the best, but we at least have our Local Roco 2 or whatever PSP game you chose to use installed. So let's fire this up and see how it works. and check it out, it is working. Well, to an extent, as you can see here, we got this uh, <laughs> nice little corrupted screen. All right, so it's not going to fully work 100%, and that's kind of to be expected, but the game is actually launching and working, which is cool. I did cheat a little bit here. I decided to go with Local Roco 2 simply because this did get an official release, so I know that this game has been built to work with the official emulator here, and it should have worked when we repacked it. But as you can see, this is a unofficial release we're doing here where I took my actual PSP backup of this, and I was able to load it up in here just fine. So yeah, even so, if we press the PlayStation button, as you can see, it's loaded up, it's working beautifully so far. There's going to be minor or major issues, of course, that are expected, but, you know, that's what we can expect here. But yeah, that's about all there is to it. Thankfully, the Dark Programmer was able to make this super easy to do on here if you have any PSP games that you want to repack into PlayStation 4 package files. Either way, if you're interested and have some time to spare, I would recommend giving this a shot and seeing what levels of success you have to grow out the PSP emulator compatibility list on this site here, just so we can have some more information and so it'd be a little bit helpful. I am going to be adding my findings on LocoRoco here right after this. But yeah, that's about it, you all. So here, again, we have LocoRoco 2 running just fine for the most part on the PS4. Anyways, that's about it for this video here. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, a like would be absolutely appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. <laughs>